What follows is an informal chat about the upcoming Bitcoin chain split in November, most commonly referred to as Segwit2x. In this conversation, Jibis, Mr. Hoddle, and others ask Bitcoin Core developer Luke Dash Jr. on his opinion about replay protection and the possible security risks. The content found herein should be taken as open-minded conversation. Cryptocurrency is an emerging topic of research, and you're encouraged to carry out your own due diligence. We'd love to get your feedback, and if you have any corrections, please post them in the comments below. Okay. Yeah, I'm just a little more worried than Hoddle about this uh, Segwit2x, thinking that uh, if the miners, if we have, uh, say, 95% of the miners who switch over, without replay protection, we just end up with two chains, but um, one which basically is confirming, and the other one is just having a more and more clogged up mempool. And as you can't split the coins, uh, in my understanding, then really there's just a functional and a non-functional chain, and it would be really, really hard to get people to just just wait uh, with 5% hash rate. We're talking like 40 weeks to for a difficulty retarget. I'm scared that people will just go with the with the two X chain, as this time the market can't just dump one and hold the other. You know? Did you get any of that, Luke? Or yeah, I think so. You can split the coins, however. You can? Yes, it's just not automatic on their fourth day. How would you go about this? Is there a way to... The lock time trick should work. Oh, you put an end lock time on it. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't think of that. Yeah. But <laughs> You're like, Luke, help me. And then he helped. <laughs> a smart person comes in and schools us all. So end lock time. Wait, wouldn't how would that not work, go on the two chains? First, you send the one for the chain that's further with more blocks with the end lock time, so it'll only confirm on that chain, and then you double spend it with RBF on the other chain. Okay. How could that not I mean, be replayed need... on the original? Okay, yeah, it's got confirmed on the first one. Okay, I see. You, you don't even need RBF, really, because the lock time will prevent it from getting mined on the slower chain anyway. Holy shit, so you could do re you could split coins with no replay protection? Yeah, yeah, you just need to actually make an effort to do it. Until somebody, like, automates it, until somebody actually, like, sets something up, right? How would you do it without replace by fee, though? Because... I got the first way, but the second way I'm not sure. Well, say that the uh, say the faster blockchain is 200 blocks further than the slower blockchain. Yeah. So then you use the lock, and you say the block height has to be two block 200, for example. The faster blockchain will confirm that immediately, and the slower blockchain won't even relay the transaction until it gets to that block, which could be days. Uh, great. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> and that's a good one. So it Thanks. takes some time, but it's it's pretty pretty easy after this. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have, if I guess in this case there's no chance of a reorg, but in other cases, if the faster blockchain wasn't significantly faster, it would get wiped out by the other chain anyway. I hear you. Thanks for clearing that up. That's already a pretty important uh, aspect. Reassures me a bit. But we still have the problem that uh, if okay, it's a big if, but uh, if those if they have ninety ninety five percent and are are sticking with it, with uh, you know, if this is really a grand plan to to to, to force us there and yeah. It's still going to be a, a long, a very long battle. There's no reason to think they have that much hash rate anyway. That's what I said. That's yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, I'm just try, we're just trying to see the, yeah, we're theorizing scenario. the worst case scenarios. But uh, what do you think? Uh, do you have any, anything to share on this? What do you, how do you think this is going to play out? Close to Bcash, very low support. Can you hear me, Luke? Yeah, I thought you were asking someone else something. No, I was wondering if you, what were your thoughts if you had a, 
a rough prediction of how this is going to go. Um, do you have an idea? Haven't so- you seen his fork? <laughs> It's the only well, one well, he... If we, learned any, if we learned anything from UASF, miners just won't do it. Hopefully, yeah. But they, they hadn't signed for Bcash, you know? I mean, we all know the agreement, and when they signed it, it's kind of bullshit because they didn't even sign for a code, or some of them didn't know the exact details. But, I mean, theoretically, they've, they're saying they still have a majority of the hash rate moving over. I know this is not to take, like, uh, probably won't happen that way, but uh, you're not worried at all? Bcash changed the difficulty adjustment so that it would adjust down to meet the lower difficulty. Whereas 2x, if they split off, they're going to just have a close to zero price and they're not going to be making the money they need to pay their electric bill. It all comes back down to the market, man. That's what we were saying earlier. It all, if I mean, maybe some could like mine at a loss longer than others, but you're gonna see less as time goes on, less and less will be able to uh, mine at a loss. It's only a matter of time before everyone turns back. The only reason Bcash isn't a loss right now is because they adjusted the difficulty down. And it's still at a loss. They're still running at a loss. Not a significant. No, yeah, not, I mean, yeah, not as bad as this would be. All right, Luke, thanks. <laughs> that was still our only concern. Thank you. All right, Gibbs. Yeah, uh, thanks, Luke. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks, Luke. Man.